What are your observations about overall the rise in popularity in uh, Islamist parties, whether in Egypt, Tunisia, with the Hanada party, now in Morocco also we have a, uh, the, the Islamist party won in plurality of votes, it's governing now with a couple of other secular parties. Now, how do you think this is going to play out throughout the region vis-a-vis -vis change, positive reform, or is it a setback? Well, I think so far, look, Ennahda in Tunisia does not particularly worry me. It's a very moderate organization, and they are politically very savvy. The, the savvy. They know that uh, they cannot push too far. Let me give you uh, in the direction of imp certainly implementing Sharia. Tunisia is a fairly, uh, uh, for example, it has had a very progressive personal status code for a long time. Uh, very different from the strict Islamist uh, uh, personal status code and so on. And they have made it clear that they don't intend to reverse it. And not only they have stated so, but in a very smart move, they, uh, they formed a government and now with two secular parties. The Ministry for Women Affairs went to one of the secular parties. They clearly made a statement there, you know, don't worry, we are not going to interfere, we are not going to do anything there. So it seems to be that it's a party that has a real sense of the political situation, its real sense of what it can do and what it cannot do. And I think most of its leaders are genuinely uh, uh, moderate. If you go out in the countryside, in the small town and so on, certainly there are more radical elements, but they are not the ones that control the organization. So I'm not worried about, at this point, about, uh, about uh, I Islamists in Tunisia. Same for Morocco, for two reasons. One, the, the PJD, the Party for Justice and Development, has been in the parliament for many years now. They have been running for election. I think this is probably the third election cycle where they ran under their own name and they were they ran before in alliance with other parties so they have a long experience they have behaved well in the parliament they have had a positive uh, a positive role in the parliament and even now their power is very much count yes they are they won the plurality of the vote but they formed again a coalition with some uh, secular parties and in morocco you have the king and although uh, you have, a, uh, you know, the PJD as an Islamist uh, party, the king in Morocco is the commander of the faithful. He is the supreme religious authority. So it's a very uh, uh, balanced situation, I would argue, which is, I think there are all sorts of guarantees against radicalization of the political scene. The only, the, the main question to me is, is the king really willing to implement some reforms some true reforms so that a few years from now we don't find ourselves in another confrontation between the king and the street. I think we have to take it for granted that in uh, Libya Islamists will do well. Islamists believe in organizing. They really are disciplined in that sense. They believe in organizing. Liberal parties squabble with each other. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they attack each other in newspapers through uh, columns and op-eds and so on and so forth. And the Islamists are very disciplined. So they, t and they speak a language, as I was pointing out earlier, that people understand the, langu the language of justice, the language of charity, the language of, you know, not the language of articles such and such of the constitution that you know, leaves people pretty indifferent. It's not that the articles of the constitutions are not important, but it's not the, it's not the way you build a following. It's not the way you make yourself popular, essentially. I think we are likely to see Islamist parties doing well in forthcoming elections in other countries. Libya is supposed to have elections in June. Probably they will, I doubt that they'll manage to be organized on time, but if they don't have them in June, they may have to postpone them some, but if they don't have them in June, they will be soon. And I suspect that Islamists will do well there as well. Well, as you said, they, they talk a language that the people can identify with fighting corruption for all these years with secular parties in power. Uh, there's been so much corruption. That's not yeah. to say that, that uh, the Islamist parties are any more or any less corrupt, but at least we will see. No, they are less corrupt right now because they, w they did not have a chance to be corrupt. <laughs> exactly. It's much more, it's much easier to be corrupt where you 
are close to the levers of power. Well, exactly. And now they the, have the levers of now power. Now they have the levers of power. They are not saints. Probably in the future there will be, you know, corruption will become a problem as well. But right now they are clean. They're clean. And, and, and of course, the way other people are not clean. And they vow to fight. So we shall see. The other question the skeptics pose is that, well, will they allow an alternance of power? How would you respond to that? Well, uh, if you ask them, they say, yes, of course. <laughs> that, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and it has not happened yet. What worries me, frankly, particularly in, uh, in Egypt, it's not whether they will allow an alternance of power, but it is whether there will be the possibility of an alternance of power. Because if the liberal parties do not pull themselves together, they will never win enough votes to really challenge the Islamists. So it's not the, the issue, will they allow an alternance of power comes if you have elections, non-Islamist non parties win, and the Muslim brothers who said, no, no, we are going to stay here. My fear is that there will never be strong enough liberal parties to really become, give, uh, you know, to compete with the, uh, uh, with the Islamists.